Greetings, friends. Kem McCall, the Jazz Vinyl Lover, back on a uh, what feels like a spring day here in New York City. Um, and today I, talk, I would, thought I would talk about Prestige Records. Uh, my good friend Daniel, the Jazz Shepherd, as he is known on YouTube, um, and he's a, I can't pronounce his last name, he's in our Jazz Vinyl Lovers group as well. He alphabetizes all his records, or he orders them by catalog number within the label, which always seemed kind of crazy to me because you can't find the records that way. way. But when you do it, I mean, I've always done it with my Impulse records, the few that I have. But when you do that, you get a really historical sort of view, not only into the way they were releasing records, but the artwork, because the artwork changes. Um, and even where they place the catalog number on the spine, and obviously the labels change as, le as the records uh, go on within a specific label. But I thought it would be fun to talk about Prestige um, and the, the variants of Prestige that I have. The earliest Prestige I have is this Milt Jackson record. 7003. They start in the 7000 series. At least that's what I'm led to believe. And then you, you work up through Miles. And there's a lot of Eddie Lockjaw Davis on Prestige, a lot of Gene Ammons, a lot of Shirley Scott. I was thinking, you know, Motown used to call, their, their call tag was the Sound of America. I think that's it, the Youth of America, the Sound of America. But Prestige was really the Sound of America in the 50s and the 60s. The sounds of working class America, the sounds of organ bars on the corner, the sounds of let's kick off Friday night and go drink, let's have chicken, let's have a party, because that's what this music really was. It was about it was party music, but it was also the blues, um, and you can really hear the direct connection in jazz to the blues on, on people like Eddie Lockjaw or Gene Ammons, of course, uh, and you know Jimmy Smith, who's not a prestige, but uh, but there's an iconic vision that prestige had whether they knew it or not they were documenting really the sound of black urban america at the time because most of these records i believe were sold in the northeast when i grew up in the south i never saw any of these records much less heard about any of these artists but up here you can find these records in new york city you know new jersey newark philadelphia probably minneapolis out where daniel is these records are not expensive they're probably starting to go up because they're rvg stamped you know, it's the, the fireworks label, and they sound freaking fantastic. Uh, you know, more excellent work of Rudy Van Gelder, and it does sound different than anything you'd hear on, on Blue Note or Impulse, you know, probably because those producers were there. I tend to think with Blue Note, well, we're hearing the sound of Rudy, but we're also hearing the sound of Alfred Lyon. Um, Prestige, I believe, is by Bob Weinstock, I believe, who wasn't a particularly loved character in the music industry. Um, but anyways, you have Lockjaw... Lots of Gene Ammons. I mean, these, this record was three seventy nine dollars originally. These records don't go for much when you can find them. They're very overlooked in, in record stores. But this is, you know, this is the sound of black rubber. This is the sound of hot summers, um, of swing, when swing music was still part of the national uh, currency of the way things were felt. Uh, that's why in the 60s you have so many lounge singers who, swing, who sing to a swing beat. Um, but they're not necessarily jazz singers. Just swing, ding, 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 was the currency of the time coming out of big bands. It was still there. Uh, you could hear that in, you know, in the, uh, the pit bands of television shows that was common. Johnny Carson, Joey Bishop, Merv Griffin, all those shows. Um, but th th that sound started to disappear in the 70s, and that's exactly when they had the, the big bands are back. The big bands never came back. We still have uh, great big bands like North Texas State, and, uh, you know, the, uh, the Ellington Big Band is still out there in various big bands, the Basie Big Band in some sort of form. But it's, it's not like it was then. Swing is not the, the national rhythmic currency of America any longer. Um, lots of Gene Ammons records. Uh, you know, Gene Ammons had a serious drug habit, but he made tons of records. I have a zillion Shirley Scott records. That's one of my favorite covers. Kisses from Shirley. Um, and uh, more Shirley Scott. There's just there's tons of Shirley Scott. And, you know, the mono pressings do have a lot more drive than the, uh, than the stereo pressings. They just do. If you can find a mono and it's clean and you have a, a system that can reproduce it, you're going to hear so much drive and slam. And mono, as opposed to stereo, mono does not like a soundstage. It's not just a little point in the middle of your speakers. Mono has its own soundstage. You know, it's the magic they pulled off in the studio when they were mixing these records. But th it's not all the instruments cluttered in one place. You, maybe your mind is creating a soundstage, but it's there in the sense of layering. Uh, 
this is like this is a great record. This woman is not a jazz singer. Her name is Carol Ventura, Prestige PR seven three five eight. Um, but this is a great record if you can find it. Her second record, this was a failure, so her second record uh, is more of a pop record. But on this one, she does, uh, heck, I don't know, but, but the arrangements are by Benny Golson. Orchestra arranging conducted by Benny Golson. This is one kick-ass record if you can find it. It's just Carol, Carol Ventura. Um, uh, you know, it's a Prestige Bergenfeld record. Um, and she sings tunes that are pretty well. She does Waltz for Debbie, Lonesome Road, If Ever I Would Leave You, uh, When the World Was Young. It could be Sinatra tunes, but she, this woman is vivacious. The band is great. But her second record, which I don't have because I, I got rid of it, is just a dull. But, you know, lounge singers were the currency of the period. You know, we have this debate sometimes that jazz vinyl lovers, well, she's singing swing. You know, there's a certain sense of, I think, of jazz singers should have a sense of the blues. Carol ain't got no blues in her. She's just having a party and she's vivacious and she can swing. You know, an example of a great blues record of a blues singer, you know, is Etta Jones. I don't, I have that record holla somewhere. Any of the Etta Jones records, you know, her big hit was Don't Talk to Strangers. Um, but she's, you know, she just, she's clever, she's sly. She's definitely got the blues. The woman has a story to tell. Edda Jones, uh, not that well known, but a great jazz singer with a lot of the blues in her. And at the end of the, their, uh, you know, when Prestige, I guess, started selling more records, they started the Swingville and Moodsville uh, branches, and, and even New Jazz, which is slightly really adventurous for Prestige. Um, this is Mal Waldron, The Quest. New Jazz, I guess because it was New Jazz. Um, you know, Steve Lacey. You used to be able to find OJCs of Prestige. They were everywhere. You'd get them for five bucks, and they're all analog pressings, and they sound really good. You can't find them anymore. I don't know. When I started working at the Jazz Record Center in the early 90s, uh, they were plentiful. They were, that was the, that's, what you, that's what you would buy to learn about jazz, and the list price was five ninety eight. But OJC pressings are hard to find now, and they surely sound better than any uh, EU digitally created um Reissue, but I'll show you a couple of these Moodsville records because I in Swingsville, I just think they're really cool. And what's also weird is I didn't realize till I started alphabetizing these these records. Jack DeJanette was on Prestige for his early records, and these are great records. Um, Sorcery <clears throat> and DeJanette's Cosmic Chicken. Now, if he was on Prestige, what don't I have that was also on Prestige? I mean, I, I thought this was on. I mean, he wanted he did some stuff on Milestone. That's actually a, a promo, but uh. That was a shock when I alphabetized all these or put them in order in, on the Prestige catalog to find that Jackie Jeanette is on, was on Prestige. I didn't have any idea. But then you've also, the Moodsville stuff and the Swingsville stuff, you know, is meant to create just what it says. I mean, a, a, a mood. And it's simple, it's grooving, it's in the pocket. Um, we had one of these in the store last week. It was a Frank Wes. And I didn't realize it was there and somebody bought it. That record is 75 bucks on uh, eBay. Give me a break. But uh, this is a Tommy. Oh, this is Shirley Scott. Moodsville. Tommy Flanagan. Moodsville. I mean, it's just, it's like late night. It's like, it was background music for that period. But now it's, you know, to me, the, the beginnings of what soul jazz really is. Coleman Hawkins. Great record. Blue label. Um, and these have later catalog numbers. These are in the eights, or this is Moodsville 19, Shirley Scott. Um, then they created their own little logo. Looks like a bed frame to me, or an upside down E. Coleman Hawkins, Moodsville 23. This one has been reissued a lot. I don't know why this one in particular, Analog Productions reissued this. Somebody else did it. I mean, maybe this is the primo. I mean, I paid 10 bucks for this. And trust me, I'd rather have this than the analog productions, even though I think they do fantastic work. You know, I want to hear the original record, not to get into the whole Music Matters thing. You know, this record sound beautiful, but I want to hear the original record. I want to be part of that history. I don't want to be part of today's history. Anyway, um, I thought I had a Swingville record I could show you. You know, they're, they were a little more predictable. You know, they were, they were swing records. Where is it? Oh. Swingville SV 2032. 
Benny Carter, Ben Webster, Barney Bagard. This is just in the pocket, swinging. They're having fun. You can hear these guys are just having a blast. It's like just another gig to them. And in that era, these guys were gigging all the time because there were clubs everywhere, up and down the Northeast, corner bars, you know, smaller halls. There was so much work for players back then. Steve Gutenberg asked me a couple times, do you think that musicians back in this period made more money than the ones today? You know, money being relative and all that. Um, there certainly was a lot more work for jazz musicians back then, and it probably paid better because anybody would go see a jazz group. They didn't think much about it. Now you have to purpose, I'm going to see jazz, as opposed to seeing something else. Anyway, this is a, just a small walk through the Prestige, Swingville, and Moodsville catalog. Stuff definitely worth checking out. Doesn't cost a lot. Some of my very, very favorite records. All right. Have a great day. Bye.